Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple farmhouse dishcloth, washcloth, and I'm going to be using some 100% cotton yarn by Hobby Lobby. Let's get started. So this washcloth is for the Paying It Forward Friday stitch for January 2023, and this is the stitch Worked Flat. I'm going to use Yarn B Cotton DK. This is in the color Almond. This is 3.5 ounces or 235 yards. It is made with US fibers. Color is almond and it is a lightweight three. It has 235 yards, 216 meters in it. 3.5 ounces, 100 grams. So it has a slightly textured been on it already. Um, it's a little, it's not smooth. It has uh, tiny little lumps in it and that's the way it is spun. So I thought it would work well with the stitch, although I have worked other projects with the stitch that look just fine in smooth yarn and striped yarn and in variegated yarn. So let's get started with this washcloth. Uh, we, it will be in multiples of two plus one. So this yarn calls for a 4.5 mm hook and I do have that here. However, this is a hybrid that I have made. This is the Hobby Lobby yarnology hooks that they sell currently at Hobby Lobby and this has a clover hook inside of it. What I did was I took the clover Amor hook out of its casing. I took the plastic hook out of this casing and I swapped it out. Uh, they only go to 5 mm in the Yarnology hooks, and um, I wanted something smaller. So I put a Crochet Amour hook inside of this. I did not glue it, but it does not come out and it does not move around. So it's up to you if you do this, if you want to glue it or not, but I have had zero issues with this moving around or anything. So we will start with a multiple of two. However wide you want to make your project, chain a multiple of two. Now typically I like a washcloth to be about eight inches wide if I'm going to use it as a dishcloth. So I am going to chain two, four, six, eight. I'm going to chain 24. Sure that it does cinch up a little bit because we do a row of double crochets but let's look yeah we're right at eight inches here so I'm gonna leave it at 24 and then add my one so 25 total for my chain and then in the fourth chain from the hook we're going to put a double crochet so one, two, three, four. We're gonna put a double crochet in there. And this will count as a stitch, this chain three on the end. And we're going to put a double crochet in each stitch all the way down this row, all the way across. Now, if you're going to make a blanket, you can do multiples of two, for as wide as you want. This is a lightweight or number three yarn, so it will be um, more chains for me than if I was using a worsted weight. But it's just multiples of two plus one. Okay, so that is our row one. 
very simple, very easy. So for row two, we are going to chain one, turn our work, and now we're going to put a single crochet in this first space here that we did the chain one. And now we're also going to put a double crochet in that same space. Now we're going to skip a double crochet and put a single crochet and a double crochet in that next stitch and do that all the way across. You're going to skip one, put a single crochet and then a double crochet. Skip, single crochet, double crochet. This washcloth is very easy and you can make a lot of these very quickly. Um, this is a two row repeat. So your next row that you're going to do is going to be all double crochet. And then the one after that will be a row exactly like this. So this is a great take along project because you will know exactly where you are when you pick up your work. You will either be on the textured row or you will be on the double crochet row. And that says it's 11 a.m. Mountain Time. In the last stitch, we are going to do a single crochet. So make sure you put a single crochet in that last stitch there. And then row three, we're going to chain three, turn our work. And we're going to not put a double crochet in this same stitch here as the beginning, but the next one over. So in your last double crochet you made on the last row, I have a hair on there, on this last double crochet you made on last row, on the last row, put a double crochet. And then put a double crochet in the single crochet of the previous row. All the way across. Your stitch count on your third row will be the same and it will be the same throughout. You will always have the same stitch count each and every row. You're not creating any more stitches and you're not decreasing any stitches. So it will be the same stitch count. So if you have a problem keeping track of your beginning and your end, just make sure you're counting your stitches and then you will be you'll be in line all the way up. Chain one, turn your work. Now we're going to repeat our row two. So we are going to put a single crochet in that same spot as our chain one, and then a double crochet in that same spot. Going to skip a stitch, put a single crochet and a double crochet in the next. Going to do that all the way across. This yarn has a texture to it unto itself, so it gives a lot of texture with the textured stitch, but this looks gorgeous with a uh, smooth yarn as well. And I'll show you a little bit of my other project I have been working on in variegated yarn. Put 
and a single crochet in your last stitch here. Then we'll chain three, turn our work, and then we're going to do a row of double crochets again. So you can see, you can see the textured stitches here, those two rows of textured stitches versus the double crochets that are smooth and flat. Let me grab my other project to show you what it looks like in the variegated yarn. This is the project I have been working on. It's a little harder to see the texture with a variegated yarn, but it is, it's these two rows right here. And I think it looks great. Um, and I can also show you on a smooth yarn once we're done with the washcloth. Uh, the yarn that I am using on that project is the Bernat Softy Baby, and that is in the color Blue Flag. So for now, we're going to continue on for our row one, two, three, four, five. Row five, we're going to do double crochets. So double crochet in the next stitch, not that same one, and all the way across. chain one and we are going to do a single crochet and a double crochet in that same first space or stitch as our chain one skip one single and double in the next stitch so you just repeat those two rows for this entire cloth and I will meet back up to you when I am finished making the body of the cloth and then I will show you how I do the edging. Very simple. So I will be right back. Okay, so I have my washcloth completed. Uh, this is how I usually uh, find out if it is square. I'll take one corner, pull it up to the opposite corner, and if they match up or they're fairly close, then I call it good. So I'm going to put the edging on this. It's just a single crochet edging. Uh, nothing special. You just want to make sure that you have three single crochets in each corner so that they turn. And then you want to put typically two cro uh, single crochets in each of the double crochets along the edge. I don't use that as a hard fast rule. Um, I just do what comes easy to the hook in the yarn. So I don't worry so much about stitch count as I do that it lays flat and nice. It doesn't pucker, you know, it doesn't pull in and it doesn't get roughly because of too many stitches. So I'm going to chain one. I am going to not turn my work and I'm just going to work along the edge here. And I put my hook in wherever it wants to go in, wherever it's easiest to go in. It's typically two stitches, two single crochets per double crochet, but that's not always the way it is. So I just put the hook in wherever it seems like it will go in easiest. Put a single crochet in, make sure not to put too many stitches in and not put too little stitches in. And then if you want to be sure that you have the same amount on the other side, if you want, you can go back and you can count your stitches that you're putting in this side. I usually do not do that though. I usually do exactly what I'm doing on the other side that I'm doing on this side and it, it works out good. I don't go around the double crochets. I go into the double crochet stitches. 
I, d I just don't like the way it leaves a, a larger gap when you go around the double crochets. But it's a personal preference and you can do as you wish. Getting to the corner here. So on the corner we put in three single crochets. One for the side, one for the corner, and one for the next edge. On this edge we are going to just put single crochet in each stitch. This was our, looks like our foundation row here. If there's a different edging you would like to put on your cloth, you sure can. corner here so I'm going to do three single crochets one for the edge one for the corner and one for this side I'm gonna keep going over my tail for a little bit so it's easier to weave in the end so if you uh, picked up any of this yarn on Clarence at Hobby Lobby this will give you a a few makes out of a skein, I'm sure. This is only a very small part of the one that I have, so you could probably get six or so, I bet, out of a skein. It doesn't take much to make a washcloth. When you're done, you can block the washcloth if you're going to gift it and you want it to look uh, more uniform if you're making more than one and you want them all to be about the same size. If you block them, uh, you can stretch them and get them to the same size. Three in the corner. And this is our last edge here. And I did not end on a double crochet row, so I'm just going to go into each of the stitches, singles and doubles. We started on this corner, so I'm going to go ahead and put two more in that corner. I'm going to slip stitch to pull through and finish off. I'm going to use my handy dandy thread cutter from Hobby Lobby that I got in the 12 Days of Christmas box. And now I'm going to weave in my ends. Pull that yarn through. I just weave in the ends usually along the edge if I did a single crochet row because it is easiest just to hide those in there. Go along one way and come back the other way. And the other end. This yarn is very soft. This would make a very nice wearable as well. You could use this yarn for a wearable. This would make a very nice spa cloth as well if you wanted to gift it with a bunch of um, 
lotions or scrubs for a birthday or a holiday, graduation maybe. Be thinking about those coming up as well. This would make a great shower gift, baby shower gift for um, with baby bath and all that good stuff, baby lotion. And then since that yarn cutter will not work too well as far as snipping yarn, I will bring out some folding scissors to do that. And there you have it. That is the very simple farmhouse washcloth dishcloth. Take a look at that and then I'll show you the one that I used in smooth yarn. I like the breakup of the textured stitches versus the double crochets. I love the way that looks. Very nice. Pull this one in here. This is made with Annie's cotton yarn from, um, I was uh, subscribed to their club for a little bit. I feel like it was two years ago. It's really hard to remember. But yeah, I, I got a couple of boxes from them and this is their cotton from that. So you can see the difference between the two. This is much more textured with the, the yarn itself is textured versus the smooth cotton. And they are about the same size, to be honest. They are, I mean, very, very, very close. I did use a 4.5 on that. So yes, I really like the washcloth a lot. So go ahead and make up. You can make blankets. You can make cowls flat. You can make hats flat. You can make scarves. Um, you could do rectangular shawls. You could do any project that you want to do flat and then if you want to seam it up for whatever reason for whatever project then you could just seam it up so that is the flat stitch for paying it forward friday for january 2023 i hope you i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i know i enjoy the stitch uh the double crochets together with the textured stitch i i find it interesting yet still very simple and uh, easy to memorize, easy as a take along project. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I appreciate you and until next time guys.